Yo, what's up guys? Joey here for Crater, and today we have a special one. We're gonna be building an RTX 4080 build. We're gonna be working with a $2,500 budget. All right guys, how we're gonna break down this video is first, we're gonna go over all the parts we're using for this build here today and their prices and why we picked them. Second, we're then going to build this PC from start to finish. I'm gonna guide you guys the whole way through. This will be a beginner friendly guide. Then at the end of the video, we're gonna put our system to the test against all current popular titles. We're gonna play a wide variety of titles to see how our 4080 performs. All right guys, this build's gonna look sick. Let's jump into the parts. We'll kick it off with our processor first. We're going with the i5-13600KF. We picked this guy up for 310. This new i5 boosts all the way to 5.1 gigahertz. It's gonna pair very nicely with our 4080. The motherboard we're gonna be installing it onto is an ASUS Prime board. The Z790 chipset is what we have here. This is the D4 version. We will be using DDR4 RAM for this build. It comes with built-in Wi-Fi. Inside here, we'll find our Wi-Fi antenna. We're also gonna wanna get out our IO shield and screws for our M.2 SSD. Okay, let's take a closer look at our board. Here's the ports. So our RAM choice is also gonna look really nice on our motherboard. It's a white Corsair Vengeance with RGB lighting. We picked up 32 gigs for our build here today. This is a 3600 megahertz kit. And we got this for 115 USD. The next component, also color white, it's gonna cool our i5. This is a Frostflow X240 Snow AIO. This AIO is a great value for your money. Goes for 55 bucks. Got your instruction manual. You will not need it because I will guide you guys through everything. And it comes with two fans that will light up. Here we have our radiator and a very solid looking AIO for 55 bucks, guys. Everything's gonna look super clean together. Next is the storage. We're going with one terabyte. This is a WD Black SSD. This was 98 bucks and this little Guy, it's gonna go fast, really fast. What's gonna power everything? A Corsair gold rated 850 watt power supply. The RM850X, the power supplies cables and our power supply. And you already know Corsair power supplies, very clean looking, high quality, reliable, efficient power. And what's gonna house everything is the case we paid 120 bucks for. This is Fantex Eclipse G360A. Let's get it out. Here it is. But it comes included with three pre-installed RGB fans. It's a clean case, really good airflow. All right, guys, our final essential component is our graphics card. This is a Gigabyte Aero RTX 4080. The MSRP of this card is 1,300. RTX 4080s right now on Amazon are going for 1,400. Here it is. And under here, woo, we have our RTX 4080. It's a huge card, guys. What the, look at this. So the back plate, steel, gigabyte. Creativity starts here, arrow. To remove the protective film. The ports, three display ports, one HDMI. The three fans, let's go, man. Look at this car, look at this beast. Now inside the box, I am finding two GPU supports here. These are the screws to mount the GPU supports. Yes, it does come with the cable you need to power these new 4000 series cards. That plugs into the new 16 pin port. But look at this. Like, does this really look presentable? It's disgusting. So we have this beauty of a card and you're gonna rock this stock power adapter with it. No, we strive for more here. Let's go ahead and disconnect this. And we're gonna be using a Crater custom sleeve power supply adapter instead. We're gonna plug this beauty in, and this one is much longer. It comes included with four cable combs, and here we have four eight pins. This cable is also compatible with the RTX 4090. You can up the aesthetics of your build by a lot with this cable. It comes in black as well, and you can pick it up at craterhq.com. I'll link it in the video's description. Every single component we're using for the build here today will be listed in the video's description. Okay, guys, so I'm gonna finish going over the optional parts. This is only to up the aesthetics of our build. Part of the optional list is the Crater custom sleeve white power supply cable for our 4080. But we're also gonna be using our Crater 
full kit of power supply extension cables in the white colorway as well with transparent clips versus the all black or the all white ones. To me, it's just super dope, guys. So now in the front of the build, instead of having the stock power supply cables on display, not very appealing at all. It's instead gonna hook up to our custom crater extension cables. And then this will hook up to the motherboard instead and be on display in the front. It's gonna look super clean. And the kit does come included with plenty of transparent cable combs. Remember guys, you can pick this up at craterhq.com, link in the video description. Another thing that we're gonna throw in there is a kit of RGB LED strips. It comes with two strips, an extension cable and the cable needed to connect it to our board and plenty of strong magnetic attachments. And last, our Funko. This is an exclusive Poison Spider-Man. It's gonna look so sick in our build. All right, guys, we're gonna jump into the build guide, and then we're gonna frag it up on our system, see how it performs. Let's do it. First, we're going to be working with our motherboard and our CPU. We take a look at our CPU. On the bottom left-hand side of it, there's a super tiny little arrow. And on our CPU socket, there's also an arrow on the bottom left-hand side. So we're gonna pull this lever to the side that's going to go all the way up and we're going to line up the arrow on our cpu with the arrow on the cpu socket so we're going to hover it over and drop it in and it's going to fall right in and it should look like that guys now we're going to bring this down and we're going to push this down and now this is normal we're going to get this out of here you want to make sure that this is under a lever and then we push it down you will feel tension it's normal you're not breaking anything keep pushing down with a bit of force and tuck it in. And there you go, the CPU is installed. Next is the installation of our RAM. Here are our RAM slots. We're gonna pull back the lever for second RAM slot and the fourth. We're rocking two sticks of RAM. We want them to run in dual channel. That is why we have to install it in every other slot. The RAM only goes in one way. You have to make sure that you line up the indent correctly on the RAM slot. I'm gonna line it up in there. And once it's in, I'm gonna push down with both thumbs equal force. We want it to go in all the way and this lever will clip back up. Same thing for the second stick. Line it up in there, push down with both thumbs. RAM installed. Next, we're gonna install our one terabyte SSD. So we're gonna need the screws that came included with the motherboard. So we have two standoffs and two screws. So we're just gonna use one of the screws and one of the standoffs. So we're gonna screw in a standoff to the first point. Now we insert our M.2 SSD to here. Now we take a number zero screwdriver, lay down our SSD onto the standoff and secure it. Done. All right, cool guys. Now we can install our motherboard into our case. In the hard drive cage, we find the accessory box. I'm gonna get all these cables to the back. Okay guys, so when installing any motherboard inside a case, you wanna make sure that first, all the motherboard standoffs inside the case are in the appropriate layout to support your motherboard. This is an ATX board and the standoffs inside the case are already in the ATX layout. So we're already good to go. First, we're gonna install our IO shield. We're gonna clip it in from the inside of the case. And we want the two circles on the bottom. We're gonna clip it in. Cool. Next, we're gonna lay our case down on your desk. First thing we're gonna do is line up the ports of the motherboard with the IO shield. And once I've done that, I then lay the board down onto the motherboard standoffs and make sure it's lined up. So the screws we're gonna use are in the accessory box of the case, and we're using this screw, guys. So we only screwed in six points, guys. Here, 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 and here. Now, before we install our CPU cooler, we're gonna connect two CPU power cables to the motherboard real quick. Because once we install our CPU cooler, then we won't have space anymore inside the case to even hook these up. So let's hook them up first. There's two sides to each cable. One of the sides splits. The side that splits is what's gonna connect to the motherboard. So we're gonna plug it into the top left of the motherboard. And this clip is going to clip up here. Plug in our first eight pin CPU power cable and it's going to look like that. But now we have a remaining four pin. So now our second cable comes into play, but we have to split it. Now we're only gonna be using four of the pins. And there we go, guys. CPU power cable plugged in. Now let's install our CPU cooler, our AIO. First, let's prep our radiator. We're gonna attach the fans to it. Make sure we install the fans in this position. So I have a laid down right here. Here are the hoses. And on my right hand side is where I want the wire of the fans to be facing. So I'm gonna put my first fan down and my second. Also, make sure the sticker is facing us. Not this side, this side is down. And each fan has four points. We've already lined it up with the radiator. Now that we secure it. So now we're gonna prep the pump with this piece right here. 
There's a side that says Intel on it. That side is going to face towards our pump. We're going to put it in. And once we have it in there, we're now just simply gonna twist. And now it's attached. This piece comes included with our cooler and we're going to work it in through the back of the motherboard. Now we have all four points. We're now going to be using this bag, LGA 1700. They come included with the cooler. So I'm holding in our back plate into place and I'm gonna insert all four. Now I'm gonna let go of the back plate and that'll hold it into place. So our radiator is going to be attached up here, but before we attach it, we need to take a look at our brick. There's one cable hooked up to it. We need to hook this cable into our CPU fan header on our motherboard, but we need to connect it first because once we attach the radiator up here, we will no longer be able to connect it. It will be blocked. So the cable is hooked up to this SATA adapter, but that's not what we wanna use. So we're gonna disconnect it from that cable. And now this is going to plug into our motherboard where it's labeled CPU fan and it's this gray header. So that is connected. And now we're gonna attach our brick to our CPU. We are going to be attaching it in this placement with the cable on the top. This process is easier if we were laying down our case. I'm gonna go ahead and do it with the case standing up. So I can show you guys right here on camera. We're going to now put a pea-sized amount of thermal paste in the middle of the CPU. And it's easier laying down because you can see it's starting to spill. So we want to remove this protective film on the back of the brick, we are going to place the brick onto it. I'm gonna go ahead and hold the back plate from the back of the case though, so it doesn't go anywhere as I'm pushing down on it. And I line it up all four points, and there we go, it's into place. I'm going to let go of the back plate with my other hand. I'm now going to use that other hand to get one of the thumb screws. And I'm going to go ahead and attach one of the thumb screws. All right, that one's in. I'm gonna switch hands and I'm going to secure a second thumb screw right across from the one I just did, so down here. Bring it in a little bit. Did the one across, so now it's held into place. Now we gotta do the remaining two. And now we can finish tightening all four thumb screws with a screwdriver. So we have to wire both of these fans to the back of the case. Here are the cables. Let's go ahead and do that. And I'm gonna pull the cables back get our radiator into place. Let's take off this magnetic dust filter. And now we screw in all eight points with the screws that come included with the cooler. And there we go. Our AIO, which stands for all-in-one cooler, has now been installed. Let's put back the dust filter. Good job, guys. We're gonna be adding two more parts to the build. An additional 120 millimeter fan, and we're gonna attach it back here. And a three-way fan splitter. These will both be linked in the video description. All right, it comes included with the screws. So I'm gonna wire the fan cable to the back of the case. And we're going to attach our fan with the Arctic sticker inside of the case. The way the splitter works is it allows us to hook up three different fans into a single motherboard fan header. And yes, we're gonna be using it for our three fans back here. The two part of our AO and the one we just installed. And now all three fans will hook up into a single motherboard fan header that we will hook up later. So we're gonna start plugging in cables soon, but first we need to install our power supply. Okay guys, we're gonna plug in four cables. First, our 24 pin power cable, we're gonna plug in the end that is split under motherboard. Should look like that. Next, they say the power cable, we're gonna plug in this end under SATA. Good. Next, we're gonna plug in two PCI Express cables. These will power our RTX 4080. So here's one and here's the other. They're both the same. So we're gonna plug in this end to the power supply. And this is the end that we'll plug into the graphics card. So we're gonna plug them in on top of PCI here and here. That's the first one and the second. Now we actually need to plug in our two CPU power cables that we plugged in earlier. So now to the back of the case, here are the two CPU cables and we plug them both in. One. All right guys, so when putting in our power supply into the case, you wanna make sure the power supply fan is facing down. We're gonna slide it into here. All right, we got it in. But this hard drive cage right here, first of all, we're not gonna use it and it takes up so much space. We're gonna remove it next. Now we secure it with the screws that come included with the power supply. All right, power supply's in. All right, so we're gonna unscrew four screws underneath the case to get this hard drive cage out. Four more screws on top. 
Now you're getting out of here, Cage. Cool, we have much more space inside our case now. All right guys, if you're following along, good job so far. Next, we're gonna be upping the aesthetics of our build. Remember, this is optional. I'm gonna be guiding you through how to hook up our crater custom sleeve power supply extensions. So first cable, this would have originally plugged into the motherboard. Instead, we hook it up to our custom extension. And now the other end will plug into our motherboard. It also comes with the two CPU power cables, but for this build, you can't see them. They're blocked, so that's why we didn't use them. Next, the kit comes with three eight pin power cables to connect any graphics card, except the new 4000 series, which we're using here today. The 4090 and the 4080 we're using here today are now powered by the new single 16 pin plug. So we're only gonna need a single extension for our 4080. Now we're gonna plug in four eight pin power cables to it. So first one, get this together and we're gonna clip it in. Moving on to our second power cable from the power supply. Cool. All right, all our extensions are hooked up now. And now we're ready to hook up cables, guys. Okay, we take it one cable at a time. This is gonna be really simple. We're gonna break down all the cables into three groups. The first group of cables is our power supply cables. Second group of cables is all the case cables, which connect the buttons on top of our case here, the power button and to change our lights, USB ports, audio and mic input jack up here too. And the third set of cables is our fan cables. All right guys, first group of cables are power cables. Going to install the cable combs on our 24 pin power cable real quick. So let's get our 24 pin power cable through here. And the clip of it is going to clip back here. I'm gonna line it up straight and then push in all the way till it clips. There we go. Next power cable, we gotta go to the back of our case. Now we're gonna power with SATUS to this. This powers the case lights. And remember the CPU power cable is already plugged in. So that leaves us with our RTX 4080 cable, which we'll be plugging in later. Okay, second group of cables are case cables. First case cable is labeled HD audio. Plugs in right here, only one way. Line it up straight and push in. The HD audio text will be facing down. Next cable, we're gonna plug in our USB 3.0 cable right here. Also only goes in one way with this hump in the middle on the right hand side. So we line it up straight and push it in. Done. Final case cable, we're gonna plug in our power switch into here. So it's going to be the top row, starting from here, the third and fourth pins. Like that guys, first row, third and fourth pins. Now the third group of cables are fans. So we have three fans in the back connected to a single fan splitter. And we have three fans that come included with the case in the front. So I'm gonna be using another three-way fan splitter for the three fans that come included with the case. So same thing as last time, hook up the three front fans to the splitter. Done. Now let's move to the front of the case. So we're gonna wire both of the fan splitters through the bottom of our case. And both of these will be plugged in right here, like that. Very nice. Now we're ready. It's time to install our RTX 4080. So we're going to be plugging in our card to the first PCI slot. So we want to pull the lever all the way back. First, we need to make room for it. We're going to remove the second and third brackets. So we remove the rubber protector that was on here. And we're going to line up the card. And once it's lined up, we're going to push straight in. And that lever is going to clip back up. Now let's screw in our card. Now time to connect our power cable to our 48. All right. And it's connected. And there we have it, guys. We're done. Now we're just going to do the finishing touches. I'm going to install a Crater RGB LED kit and Funko Pop. And then cable manage the back. Cue the time lapse. We're done guys, a little masterpiece here is complete. I'm gonna get the lights off and we're gonna power it up together for the first time. All right guys, here we go, first boot up. Whoa. But here's the build guys. If you guys were following along, congratulations. We just built the best bang for your buck, 2,500 USD PC. And this build looks super clean guys. Now we need to install the Windows 11 operating system. I've made a video tutorial on how to install Windows 11 from a flash drive for free. It's linked in the video's description. And then finally, we're gonna put this new beautiful rig to the test. Remember guys, every single part we used for our build will be linked in the video's description. All right guys, let's get down to it. 
Settings for Apex Legends, 1440p, max FOV at 110, reflex on enable plus boost, and the rest of the graphic settings. Let's do it. Bad spot to camp. Oh no. Good job, guys. Good job. Here we go. <laughs> I got him on the toe. Oh, crap. I'm going to die. Oh, dude, this guy's lit. What the? F Can't win them all. Performance on Apex that was amazing. We're gonna play God of War completely maxed out ultra settings at 1440p resolution with reflex on on plus boost. There's the mountain. Let's go. Not yet. Hang on! Hurry! I'm slipping! Got you, boy. I mean, more dead? Boy. Not dead, not dead! Remember, accuracy over speed. That's how you do it. All right, guys, next game. Settings to rest, 1440p. FOV is to 90, and here are the graphic settings. Sir. Sir. Hey, you don't want to mess with me, man. I never miss. Yeah, I highly fuck. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Look how beautiful the water looks, guys. Look at the water physics. Isn't this a beautiful sight? Hey! Say you're sorry, and I'll spare you. <laughs> Settings for Overwatch 2, 1440p, max FOV, 103, reflex on enable plus boost, and the graphics quality, here it is. Oh, we got so many frames for Overwatch, too. For Fortnite, we're playing on full screen, 1440p. V-Sync is off, and here are the rest of the settings. Oh my goodness. Oh, well, I didn't get the win, but still, performance was super good. Settings we're going to use for Valorant 1440p, reflex on on plus boost. Here's the graphics quality. When lit by my sauna, that's when we strike. Fight! What the f One kill remaining. 
remaining. No. We got second. Alright guys, we're gonna play some Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer now. Settings we're using, 1440p resolution. Quality, here are the settings. And when we head over to view, 120 FOV. Let's have some fun. Enjoy these nuts in your mouth. Siri on my iPhone. Remember the name, don't forget it. Now we're gonna move on to Warzone 2.0. Are you kidding me? My gun needs to be. Oh, we need to reload too. Oh my goodness. Hello. You're just hiding in the house. Oh, what? I didn't have to fight anyone. Oh, shoot. He burned me, bro. He burned me. All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up right there. All the games performed well. Of course, that's what's expected with a $2,500 build. All right, guys, I'll catch you guys in the next build guide. Peace.